Al is a young man who lives in the fantastical world of magic and monsters. All his life, his only goal has been to become a farmer and have a very fulfilling life away from the hassle of towns and people. Somewhere he can live alone and keep on farming, getting better in all aspects of it. He is about to get ready for the harvest and is already removing the eggplants as they are ready to harvest when he is interrupted by his friend called Testa. Testa asks him about the harvest this season and Al proudly reveals that the harvest has been very good this time as well. Testa asks Al to look at his stats, to which he agrees and shows off his stats. Testa is utterly shocked to see that Al has maxed out his farming abilities and not only that, he has also maxed out his fishing abilities, which gives Testa a very bad inferiority complex since he is supposed to be a fisherman and yet, Al has better fishing stats than him. When asked by Testa about this sudden growth, Al replies that he got a special ability in his talent tree, which boosted his levels and stats. Testa sighs, knowing that you can't do anything about someone's luck, and to change his mood, he invites Al on a fishing trip. They both get a yacht and venture inside of the oceans, which are filled with giant fish and other monstrous creatures. A couple of giant fishes jump out of the water to try and take down Testa, and his boat, Budo, uses his pulse sword to slice the fishes into small pieces in the blink of an eye, shocking Testa completely. They both go back to their houses, and Al remembers that he has to take the produce that he harvested into the royal capital for sale as if he is late, the vendors might buy from someone else, and there is a chance of his produce getting spoiled. He loads all his vegetables into the cart and gets ready to transport them into the royal capital. While on his way to the royal capital, he overhears a loud roar, which he first thinks is the sound of thunder. But then he looks around and spots a giant dragon in the sky flying above the tree line. It seems to be attacking a bunch of soldiers on the ground as they try to leave. Al decides to help the men escape the dragon by distracting it and running away. He picks up the carrot he was eating and throws it at the dragon, hoping to distract him just a bit before he himself flees the situation, but he is utterly shocked to see that as soon as the carrot hits the dragon, the dragon explodes into small pieces. The soldiers on the ground are completely taken aback and wonder what kind of an insanely powerful person could kill a dragon with one hit, while Al quickly rushes off into the capital, as he didn't want to be late. The confused soldiers later arrive on the road to try and find the person who saved them, but they only found a bunch of track marks made by a cart. Al reaches the capital and on the gate, he is asked for his ID card, which he gladly shows them. He is then given entry into the capital, but before he could go to the vendor, he heard a loud noise and looked behind to see a hooded guy on a horse, running away with a young girl about his age in his hands. The guards try to stop him, but fail miserably. Thankfully, Al is able to jump towards the kidnapper and grab the girl out of his arms, saving her. The hooded guy furiously gets off his course and moves towards Al with a short sword in his hands. He threatens Al to hand over the girl, but Al obviously refuses, which angers the stranger, who rushes with the sword drawn and slashes at him. Al is able to dodge his swing and perform a perfect takedown of his opponent, knocking him down using a judo technique. The guards quickly apprehend the perpetrator, and the girl thanks him, asking for his name. Al, however, remembers that he is getting late and quickly gets on the cart and rushes off without replying. Thankfully, he is able to reach the vendors in time and sells them his produce at a very good price. He starts to return happily, but the guards stopped him just as he was about to leave the gates of the royal capital. He gets confused and asks whether he did something wrong, but a voice from behind makes him turn around. He is surprised to see the same girl that he saved standing behind him. She tells him that she is the princess of this kingdom, and she orders the guard to stop him. He quickly gets off his horse and bows down to the princess, apologizing for high lack of courtesy as he didn't know who she was. She tells him to get up and orders him to stop being so formal with her. She introduces herself as Fall, the first princess of this kingdom, and Al finally introduces himself as a farmer. She is utterly shocked to hear that he is a farmer, and gets so impressed that she asks him to work for her. He replies that he doesn't want to work in the palace as he is just a regular farmer whose only goal is to keep farming for the rest of his life. The princess, however, isn't planning to leave his back so early, and she tells him that if he works for her, she will give him a huge chunk of land so that he could farm as much as he wants. Before he could reply, however, the soldiers that he ended up saving from the dragon returned back to the city and informed the princess that the dragon was dead, but they were not the ones who killed it. They explained that it was extraordinarily strong, and they were completely overwhelmed, but suddenly someone extremely powerful ended up killing the dragon. They also tell her that when she tried to find the person who did that, they only found the tracks of a cart. The princess puts two and two together and realizes that it must have been Al who killed the dragon. She quickly turns towards him, but is surprised to see that he already ran off in his cart outside the capital. He reaches back home and decides to turn in for the night as it has been a very tough and exhausting day, but is suddenly woken up by Testa banging at his doors. He quickly gets up to answer it and asks Testa if he wants something. Testa reveals that he has to run as a bunch of monsters are walking past the village and everyone is scared for their lives. Al quickly gets up and tells Testa to go ahead, as he has to make sure that his crops are okay. 
Testa is taken aback by this and tells him that they aren't important, but Al still tells him to just go without him and he will follow. Testa tells him the destination where they are headed and tells Al to follow them soon. Al promises to do so and quickly runs towards the field. Thankfully, he sees that all of his crops are okay and is relieved. Before he could leave, however, he spots a huge group of monsters moving past the village. He decides that he shouldn't intervene as it is the job of the soldiers to deal with them. But he starts thinking that if the kingdom ends up being destroyed by the monster, no one would buy his crops. And then he will never be able to become a farmer for life. This motivates him and he starts following the trail. He suddenly reaches a dead end where he is surprised to see a bunch of guards dead on the ground. He notices a demon, who is giving off a very strong vibe trying to attack the king and his daughter. He quickly moves into action and disrupts the demon's attack, stating the already injured king and his daughter. The demon seems surprised at this newcomer who was able to disrupt his attack and asks him who he was. Al truthfully replies that he is just a normal farmer who lives in the nearby village. The demon then introduces himself as Romeo, the new demon king who has a vision of capturing the entire kingdom by killing the king, then posing as the king himself, allowing all the demons inside the country so they can seize absolute control. The demon decides to fight Al and draws his sword out before rushing towards Al with blinding speed. He tries to strike Al, but he is not fast enough, as Al simply grabs the sword with his hands and throws the demon king into a wall. The demon king gets up again and seems to be extremely angry. He tells Al that he isn't even using his full power yet and ends up transforming into an even greater demon, killing the rest of the guards on the spot. He threatens Al before rushing towards him again, but to everyone's surprise, Al simply dodges his punch and delivers a punch of his own straight to the face of the Demon King, knocking him out completely. Watching their king be beaten so easily by the hands of Al, the rest of the demons quickly run away into the night sky, never to be seen again. The next day, Al is invited into the palace, where the king formally thanks him for his help, and not only that, he also personally offers him any position at the palace that he would wish to have, as the king considers Al to be better than a hundred men combined together. Al graciously declines again, repeating that all he wants is to live his life in peace as a farmer. The princess intervenes this time and tells Al that she is going to hand over the giant chunk of land to him for saving their life, and he could do anything with it. Al gets seduced by the thought of having such a big farm and accepts. Later, the princess asks him to just register at the Adventurer's Guild and help them sometimes when the matter starts getting too out of hand. This time, Al accepts her offer, making all the parties happy. Al is finally able to see his newly acquired land, but he is shocked to see that the entire area is completely barren as of now, and he will have to make it workable again before he can start growing produce again. The next day, the princess accompanies Al on a short date in the capital with the excuse of showing him around the city. They go to several places and eat a bunch of food, before deciding to head back to the guild to register Al as an adventurer. He asks the princess whether it is okay for her to come as she is supposed to be a very well-known and important person. But she replies that one of her maids has taken her position, pretending to be her and she is also wearing a special hairpin that completely conceals her true identity. Both of them entered the guild and as soon as the guild master saw Al, he rushed towards him, asking if he was the rumored adventurer who helped the royal family. He quickly takes him to the front desk, asking the receptionist to register him in the guild. Before he could get registered, however, his stomach started rumbling and the guild master let out a big laugh, ordering the receptionist to get something for him to eat. The receptionist takes him upstairs, gives him a hearty breakfast that fills him up, and then starts the process of registering him in the guild. She asks him about himself and he explains to her that he just wants to be a farmer, and he is doing adventures on the side during his free time. Suddenly, however, the three adventurers that Al saved from the dragon enter the room and recognize Al, claiming that he is the adventurer who slew the S-ranked dragon of the forest single-handedly with just one hit. This draws a lot of attention and everyone starts looking at him. He quickly tries to dissipate the situation, claiming that it was just an accident as he doesn't want to draw any unnecessary attention to himself. The adventurer trio introduces themselves as Jake, Luke, and Lamia, who are all high-class adventurers themselves and they thank Al for saving their lives the other day and move away. Al turns towards the receptionist again who tells him that he is currently a G-rank adventurer and even though he seems to be very strong, he won't be able to take any higher-ranked quests. He agrees to that and asks for a quest that he could do right now. The receptionist quickly looks through her folders and gives him a quest to retrieve 10 plants from deep inside the forest. According to her, these plants are excellent for vitality and are often used by adventurers to restore health. Al gladly accepts the quest and gets up. He asks her her name and she introduces herself as Helen, who works as a receptionist and the caretaker here. She then gives him a robe, which she claims will increase his defense a bit. He thanks her again and moves outside the building where he finds the princess waiting for him. He announces that he is finally an adventurer, but reminds the princess again that he is only a part-time adventurer and that his actual job is still as a farmer. The princess laughs and agrees with him. 
He tells her that he is going to the forest now, and it could be dangerous, so he cannot risk taking the princess with him. She agrees, and they both part ways for the time being. He goes inside of the jungle and starts finding all the plants he needs. He is able to collect nine plants without incident, and now only needs one more to complete his quest. He tries looking around but suddenly feels something behind her, and is terrified to see an orc. The orc quickly jumps on top of him and grabs a fern hold of him. He gets terrified and starts screaming for help, and suddenly, someone launches forward and kills the orc with one swift strike. He looks up to find Jake standing there. He thanks him, and while they were talking, both Luke and Lamia also arrived at the spot. While they were talking, Al also picked up a weird-looking black scale, which he had never seen before and no animal in this forest should have such scales. Jake explains that there have been incidents of people finding these scales, but they have never seen the actual animal from which they come. Lamia also advises Al to take the scale and sell it, as it might fetch a good price. They were still discussing the scale when suddenly, they all felt an immense amount of pressure surrounding them. The pressure was so vile and evil that every single one of them froze on their spot, unable to even move. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise and spot a giant black dragon emerging from the ground and walking towards them. His power was so overwhelming that even Al stood there, frozen in place, trembling with fear. The dragon moves towards them, but because of the extreme pressure, none of them are able to move. Thankfully, the dragon decided to walk past them without hurting them. They all let out a sigh of relief and quickly ran outside. The next day, Al goes to the guild with a very serious face and spots Helen. He tells her that he wants to discuss something extremely important. She quickly arranges a meeting with the guild master and everyone gathers around. Al and the others describe their experiences, and he notices that Helen seems to be sick after hearing about the black dragon. The guild master claims that the dragon is supposed to have been defeated a long time ago. And according to myth, the dragon is the sign of the destruction of the entire world. As soon as he said that, Helen fell onto the table dizzy. Everyone starts tending to her, and wants her to rest. But she refuses, claiming that she has to learn the entire thing. She asks for more information, but the group informs her that the dragon simply passed them and disappeared into the forest. Suddenly, however, Al remembers that he found the scale. He presents the scale to everyone, and to everyone's surprise, Helen simply falls over, completely unconscious. Everyone rushes to her, and they take her to a different room so she can rest. All those to a separate room, still very confused by everything, just then, an old woman walks in, introducing herself as the foster mother of Helen. She explains to him that a mysterious force destroyed her village 15 years ago, killing everyone there. Somehow she was able to survive, was swept away in the ocean, and found her way to the shores of this city. She found her, and the only thing that she had was the robe that she gave to Al. Al claims that he will get to the bottom of it and find a way to defeat the dragon. The old woman screams at him, telling him that he is a G-ranked adventurer and should stay away from this matter. He replies that he won't be going to actively fight against it, but he will try to collect as much information as possible from the library and other sources to find a way to defeat it. The woman relaxes after hearing this and gives him some health potion, telling him that she will make it a quest for him, so he can even earn money for it. He thanks her and leaves the guild, making his way towards the library. While in the library, he searches through all the modern books, but finds no mention of the dragon anywhere. Then he remembers the story of the old lady, who told him about the mysterious disaster that happened in Helen's village 15 years ago. He tries to go towards the section that has information about incidents from 15 years ago, but he is stopped by the librarian who claims that only people of a certain rank can access those books. He pleads with her to let him have a look, but she plainly refuses to let him see. Suddenly, he hears a voice from behind and turns around to see Fall standing there. The librarian is shocked to see the princess herself here and asks if Al is with her. She replies that she gives Al permission to look through the old books, and of course the librarian agrees to that. She sends both her and Al into the room, where they both access the books with the records of the incidents from 15 years ago. While flipping through the pages, he finds the records from Helen's village, which describe the disaster as catastrophic. Several people seem to recall seeing the black dragon, but all of them have lost their memories. Al suspects that even Helen lost all of her memories because of this, and after seeing the scale, her memories might be coming back. He decides to go visit her village the next day, and Fall tells him that she will accompany him. He tells her not to, as it could be dangerous, but the princess is adamant, and finally Al has to bend to her commands. The next day, both of them leave on a journey and finally arrive at the location that was once the home of Helen and several others. All the walls and buildings have been charred black and turned to rubble. While walking through the rundown village, he suddenly hears the voice of a kid, calling him towards the graves. He asks Fowl if she could hear anything, and she refuses. He quickly starts following the voice and finally arrives at a grave, where he sees an apparition wearing the same robe as him. The boy tells Al that he is the first person who can hear his voice. He tells Al that he is Helen's brother, who died when the black dragon invaded the village. 
He introduces himself as Rai and Al notices that he is wearing the same robe as him. He points it out to him and Rai tells him that the robe has magic properties and it once belonged to him. He also explains that Helen must have trusted Al very deeply because she gave the robe away. Fall is still completely in the dark and doesn't know what is happening as she can't see Rai or hear his voice. Al suddenly gets an idea and decides to try and cover Fall with the robe as well and it turns out he was able to talk to Rai because he was wearing a robe that was directly connected to him. Fal freaks out the first time she sees Ray and tries to scream, but Al quickly holds his hand over her mouth, and slowly she calms down. Ray explains to them that 15 years ago, this used to be a perfectly beautiful village and everyone was completely peaceful, living their lives in harmony. Suddenly, one day while he was playing in the woods with his sword, he overheard the sound of an explosion and saw smoke coming from the direction of the village. He grabs his sister's hand and runs towards the village only to find it being destroyed by the black dragon. He sees the dragon kill a bunch of villagers which terrifies him and he decides to run away with his sister. But Helen is very disturbed at the sight of all the destruction and freezes up. The dragon turns towards her and seeing her despair he gets extremely happy as he feeds on people's despair. The more someone becomes hopeless and goes into despair, the more the dragon gains power. The dragon moves towards Helen, intending to kill her but Ray throws his sword into his eyes, hoping to hurt it. But it has no effect on the giant dragon. He shouts at Helen to run away but she is still frozen. The dragon turns towards him, as he knows if he kills the brother in front of the sister, she will go deeper into despair. He ends up chomping Rai down as if he were flaming hot Cheetos. He then leaves Rai mortally wounded on the ground. Helen finally makes a move and runs towards Rai. The black dragon, however, has a very sick sense of humor and decides to spare her life so she can run away and tell the tales of terror, making people more scared of him. And after 15 years, he will return and kill her and everyone around her. Both Al and Fall are disturbed by getting this information and Rai urges Al to rush back to the kingdom and save Helen as the dragon will be making his move. Al grabs Fall and runs as fast as he can back to the kingdom. Fall tells him that he should go ahead and find Helen, while she will mobilize the army for the oncoming attack. They both agree with the plan and Al runs towards the guild where Helen is supposed to be resting. At the guild, however, Helen's foster mother goes in to check on her, but is shocked to see that she is missing from her bed. She gets extremely scared and confides in Al about the situation. Al quickly rushes inside the jungle to try and find Helen. While Al and Fall were in her village investigating the dragon, Helen ended up regaining her memories, and she remembered the dragon's promise that when he comes back, he will kill her and everyone that's near her. Remembering this, Helen decides to go into the forest alone with a knife. She walks through the forest, shaking like a leaf out of fear, and finally reaches her destination where the dragon appears in front of her. He mocks her for coming into the forest so stupidly, and starts mocking the death of her brother, telling her that the death of every single person in the village was because of her, and that now, every single person in this kingdom will die because of her. All this talk fills Helen with despair and becomes a feast for the dragon. He tries pushing her to the point where she completely loses hope, and tells the dragon that she will offer herself as a sacrifice, and that he will just leave the rest of the people associated with her alone. The dragon promises to let the others live if she gives up any hope of survival and kills herself. She picks up the knife and puts it on her throat, ready to kill herself, but thankfully, Al arrives at the very last moment and stops her from killing herself. She is completely shocked at his sight and even the dragon is surprised that he didn't even hear his footstep. He gets angry at Al for interrupting her at the last moment, as he can feel a sliver of hope arising inside of Helen when she sees Al. He uses his giant paws to smack Al away like a fly and proceeds to urge Helen to kill herself, but to his surprise, Al stands up and starts walking towards him again. The dragon commands Al's strength and durability, as no human being could have survived that attack. Al runs towards the dragon and delivers a powerful punch to his face, throwing him against the tree. He now understands the dragon's source of power and realizes that hope makes the dragon weak. He quickly tells Helen that the both of them will surely survive out of this mess, and he clearly sees that the dragon's strength goes down a little, as she gets a bit of hope. The dragon is furious at this and charges towards him, swinging his giant paws at him, but Al calmly dodges his attacks and retaliates with a swift punch to the face. The dragon quickly recovers and uses its tail to whip Al away. He falls to the ground and the dragon tries to crush him with his foot, but Al grabs it and holds it up. He quickly dodges the strike and runs away. The dragon uses his fireball attack which blows Al away, but he is still able to stand up. He quickly grabs Helen and runs into the woods, reassuring her that none of this was her fault, and the dragon is trying to make her lose hope and he is feeding on her despair. He tells her to not lose hope and that they are going to defeat the dragon together and take revenge for what the dragon did to her brother. She finally smiles and starts gaining back some hope, which the dragon realizes and starts going crazy up in the sky. 
Al can clearly see his strength dropping, and with one last ditch effort, the dragon tries to attack both of them. But Al is able to sneak through his attack and punch him cleanly in the face, knocking him to the floor, seemingly destroying the dragon. He turns towards Helen, wanting to check whether she got hurt, but suddenly he is stabbed by a dagger in his stomach. He looks up to see Helen's face, which has a vile grin on it. Helen twists the knife inside of Al's gut, which results in a wave of intense pain rushing through his entire body. He tries to take one of the health potions that he has, but because of the pain he fumbles the bottle, and it spills over. Helen doesn't waste any time as she rushes forward with the knife in her hand and starts swinging it on him. He tries to use healing magic on himself, but the wound is too deep. Helen comes in for one final attack, which would have definitely killed him, but suddenly something comes and stands in front of him, protecting him from Helen's attack. He looks up to see a giant white dragon in front of him. The dragon is beautiful and looks as if it were made of glass, and Helen seems to know the dragon. She calls him Mirage, and Al remembers that Mirage was the name of the benevolent dragon who killed the black dragon ages ago. He still seems completely confused about this sudden weird behavior of Helen and starts despairing. But Mirage tells him to not lose hope as these actions are not taken by Helen, but instead by the black dragon who has possessed her, and he is using her as a pawn in his strategy. Suddenly, everything starts making sense to Al, and he calms down realizing that Helen could still be saved. Mirage tells him that he will try to heal Al's wound, but after that he will be incapacitated for a bit of time, and he will have to survive for the time being. He then uses his regeneration ability to completely heal Al's wound, but he instantly gets exhausted and falls over. Helen seems to be relieved that Mirage is down on the ground as the Black Dragon believes that Al will never hurt Helen, and he could use it to his advantage. Al looks into Helen's eyes and sees that beneath the vile eyes of the Black Dragon, she is still there, looking at him, telling him to stop her from doing damage to anyone. He listens to her and rushes towards her body, delivering a powerful gut punch to her, shocking the Black Dragon completely, who doubles down and falls over. Suddenly, the real voice of Helen comes from her mouth claiming that she is back and that the Black Dragon is no longer possessing her. Al falls for the ploy like a dumbass and goes over to help her. As soon as he grabs her hand, the atmosphere changes again as it turns out that the Black Dragon was just pretending to be Helen. Who could have seen that coming, right? Helen grabs his hand, and the Black Dragon tries to possess Al's mind as well, but once inside his mind, he is shocked to see that there is no despair or negative thoughts there, and all he is thinking about is farming and harvesting crops, so he can fulfill his dreams of becoming a successful farmer, spending his life in peace. This mental purity repels the Black Dragon's attempted possession, which causes him to flee. Al, however, gets completely exhausted after repelling the possession and falls over to the ground. Thankfully, Mirage recovers by that time and uses his purifying magic on Helen, freeing her from the possession of the Black Dragon, and killing him once and for all. Al wakes up in a bed, and he looks up to see both Helen and Fall looking over him. They seem to be very relieved to see him awake again, and ask him about the way he is feeling. Al asks them about where they are, and they reply that currently, they are at the Guild's clinic, and he has been knocked out for three days now. Fall hugs him out of happiness as she thought he might never wake up again. Helen explains to Al about how Mirage purified the Black Dragon after Al got knocked out, and he listens to the story with amazement. He asks where Mirage is now, but Helen replies that to purify the Black Dragon, Mirage ended up using all of his energy and transformed into an ethereal form to regain his energy inside of a deep slumber. Al asks whether Helen is okay, and she replies that not only is she okay, but she also ended up gaining some powers thanks to the Black Dragon. She stands back and suddenly transforms one of her arms into dragon arms and slowly shows them how she can transform all of her limbs into dragon limbs that have immense power. Al gets shocked and for a moment thinks that she is still possessed, but she quickly calms him down, explaining that because he was still in her body when he got purified, some of his abilities ended up staying attached to her body, and she has decided to use these abilities for the good of common people. Suddenly, the door to their room bursts open and Jake, Lamia, Luke, the Guildmaster, and Helen's mother all come pouring in. They all ask Al about how he is feeling, and after he shows them that he has completely recovered, and there is nothing to worry about, they all rejoice, and Luke proposed a toast and a party that evening. They all go to a tavern where they eat and drink, while Helen shows them how she can change her limbs into dragon limbs. The next morning, he returns to his field to work on the harvest, and asks for help from Testa, who, as a good friend should, immediately agrees. While carrying the vegetables, a postman runs up to them and hands over a letter from Al's mom and dad. They return to Al's home where he opens up the letter and finds out that his parents are worried about him as he hasn't written or visited them in some years now. They ask him to come visit them once and even enclose some money that he can use to pay for his travel to their town. He thinks about it and ends up deciding that after he completes his quests, he will go and see them. He goes to the royal capital and makes his way towards the guild, but on the way he spots some beautiful and succulent tomatoes on a vegetable stall. 
He goes toward them eagerly and buys one of them. He takes a bite into the tomato and is shocked at how juicy and delicious it is. He can't stop gushing about how perfect the tomato was and pleads with the vendor to tell him who sold him the tomato, as he himself is a farmer and would love to produce tomatoes like these. The vendor discloses that the delicious properties of these tomatoes are the result of a special fertilizer that is being used in a place called Lurgus, as the tomato is from there only. The name sounds familiar to him, and he suddenly remembers that Lurgus is the place where his parents have recently shifted. He quickly thanks the vendor and runs towards the guild. He finds Helen at the reception and asks her for a favor. He begs her to transfer his quest to someone else, as he wants to visit his parents in another country. She gets the folder and looks at the quests assigned to him, then replies to him that he doesn't need to worry, as she will take these quests. He looks at her unbelievably, and she quickly replies that ever since she got the power to transform her limbs, she has registered herself as an adventurer, and has been undertaking some easy leveling quests by herself. She also reveals that she has already become an F-ranked adventurer and has been gaining a lot of confidence in herself. She reassures him that she will be able to handle the quest by herself, and that he should go to his parents' place and relax for a change. He thanks her and moves out of the guild, where he runs into Fall who came to meet him, as she also wants to accompany him on his next quest. He quickly explains to her his situation, and tells her that her quest would be taken by Helen, and if she wants to go on quests, she should go with her. Fal quickly asks him where he will be going, and he tells her that he's going to visit his parents' place. Fal, the thirsty princess, quickly changes her mind about going on the quest, and asks him if she could accompany him to his parents' place, but he swiftly refuses, and before she could argue, he runs away from the responsibilities, just like my dad did. He goes through the forest again and is again spotted by an orc who starts chasing him around the forest. He is once more captured and once more someone else saves him. This time he turns around to spot a girl with blue hair standing with her sword out, asking if he was okay. The girl introduces herself as Ruri and asks him about the reason he is alone inside of such a dangerous forest. He replies that he is an adventurer and was going to Lurgus to meet his family. She looks at him and says that she is even going to Lurgus, and if he wants to he can accompany her, as this place is not safe for newbie adventurers. While going through the forest in the evening, both of them suddenly felt a presence around them and heard someone running towards them. Both of them take a fighting stance and are ready to fight and out of the bushes emerges the person who was running towards them. Ruri is ready to attack, but a horrified Al realizes that it is just the postman and stops Ruri just in the nick of time. The postman delivers another letter to him and runs off into the forest. Al explains to her that during his travels, his mom has been constantly sending him letters as she is a very clingy and overly loving person. She asks whether he was only going to meet his parents during his trip, but he explains to her that the actual reason why he came here is to get a special kind of fertilizer that is only found in this place. He explains that he is actually a farmer, which only ends up confusing her even more. He tells her that he is a farmer, who has started going on adventures recently on the side. Finally, the night starts falling and she decides to rest for the day. She starts taking out the supplies for a tent from inside her side bag. Al is completely shocked to see how many things the small bag contains and asks her about it. She replies that it is a family heirloom that has some special ancient magic and has much more space inside of it than it looks. Al is aware that a regular person cannot possess this kind of ancient magic heirloom. He asks her about her lineage and she finally reveals that she comes from the bloodline of the hero, which makes her a direct descendant. He gets shocked when he realizes that he is sitting beside the descendant of an actual hero who defeated the legendary demon King Macbeth. She tells him that she believes that it is her job to make sure people stay safe otherwise, she is just a stain on the name of the hero. He tells her that he thinks otherwise and no matter whether she is able to save one person or a thousand, she will still be a good person, because her heart is pure. She is taken aback by this statement as up till now she has always been stuck in the shadow of her ancestors, and everyone expects her to be just as good, which in the long run has taken a huge toll on her mental health. She quickly changes the subject and tells him that she is going to turn in for the night, he gets up and starts getting into his sleeping bag outside the tent, but she tells him that he can stay inside of the tent as she trusts him. He tells her that she shouldn't trust someone so quickly, but she replies that she has really good instincts and she can't feel any kind of evil thoughts in his mind. He still seems very conflicted about sleeping inside, but she reminds him that there might be more orcs outside of the tent, which quickly makes him run inside the tent. They lay down on their separate beds, and Ruri confides in him that she always wanted a friend on her journeys, but she never got one as she didn't have any friends. She also tells him that one of her dreams is to sleep while talking to another person while on a journey together. Al tells him that they can fulfill that dream of hers today and starts talking, but before he could even start, he realizes that she is already asleep and goes to sleep himself as well. The next day rolls around and they finally reach the city of Lurgus, and after entering it, Ruri softly says that this is the end of their journey. 
She also tries to ask in whether it is possible for them to travel back together to the royal capital, but because of her nature, she is unable to say so. Al, however, realizes that and he himself asks her to be his guard and escort him back to the royal capital, which she gladly agrees to. She draws him a map to her hotel and tells him to come to her whenever he wants to leave. With that, they part ways and Al goes back to his parents' place, where he eats a bunch of food and reconnects with his parents. The next day, he goes out and buys the fertilizer he came to buy, and while going back to his parents' house, he overhears a commotion and runs towards it to find that it is happening just outside Ruri's hotel. A hooded stranger claims that a demon attacked his partner and a blue-haired girl went to fight it. Al asks him where they went and he replies that they ran into the forest. Al follows the trail and finds a hooded girl in the forest screaming as a warm monster tries to attack her. Al quickly jumps to her defense and defeats the monster with one blow. The girl clings to Al, thanking him for saving his life, but when he isn't looking, she quickly transforms into a real form as a demon and tries to attack him. Thankfully, Ruri arrives at the last moment and quickly dispatches the demon. She tells him to be careful as the demons here can transform to look like humans, and just then the same hooded man who pretended to have been attacked by the demon emerges from the shadows and commends both of them for being able to defend against their attack. The strange man introduces himself as Loki, and tells them that he knows everything about them even the fact that Al was the one who defeated the last demon king and defeated the black dragon by himself. He tells Ruri that she was just a pawn and the person he wanted was Al himself. Hearing this, Ruri rushes towards him with her sword drawn and tries to hack away at him, but Loki cleanly dodges and hits her on the back, wounding her terribly. Al runs towards her and quickly uses recovery magic to heal her wound before standing up to face Loki. He runs towards Loki and tries to punch him. Loki is easily able to grab his hand and throws him into a tree, but Al recovers his balance mid-air and launches himself at Loki again. He dodges one more time and delivers a powerful punch to Al, making a hole inside of the ground. Surprisingly though, Al comes out of the hole, barely hurt, and is able to finally deliver a punch on Loki's face. The punch barely affects Loki and he himself punches Al which sends him flying away. Al is able to get up again and uses recovery magic on himself to get healed and ready for the next attack. Loki reveals that after dealing with Al, who he now knows for sure could be a problem later, he will deal with Helen as well. Al is shocked at the mention of her name and asks what she did, to which he replies that she possesses the power that belongs to the evil black dragon and that it is not to be used for good. He then proceeds to summon two giant worm monsters, who attack both Al and Ruri. Al is able to dodge the attack, but Ruri seems to be frozen in place, so Al quickly runs towards her and carries her out of the way of the attack. The worm attacks Al again, but this time Ruri is able to defend him against the attacks. Together, they are able to ward off any attacks by the monsters, but Loki ends up using explosion magic, which hurts both Al and Ruri. He then proceeds to summon more monsters who hold Al down to the ground while he moves towards Ruri with the intent to kill her once and for all. Suddenly, however, Loki turns back to see that his monsters have been turned to husk and Al is again on his feet with a bag of fertilizer in his hand. He explains that this fertilizer contains a bunch of pesticides inside of it that are extremely effective against worms and leeches. He then jumps towards Loki again, but by this time, Al himself is completely tired out but still tries to keep fighting. This lights a spark inside of Ruri, who realizes that even though Al knows that he can never win in the condition that he currently is in, he is still trying his absolute hardest to protect her. So how could she stop trying and accept defeat? While Loki is busy dealing with Al, she calmly steps up behind him and stabs him right through the stomach with her sword. Loki calmly turns around and tells her that no matter what she tries, she cannot defeat him. He then proceeds to simply walk out of the sword and turns around to face her. Suddenly, however, something changes inside of Ruri, and she seems to be overflowing with a new kind of energy. She starts glowing and an intense energy field surrounds him which even shocks Loki himself, who never expected something like this from her. She rushes towards him with blinding speed and delivers a swift cut, which Loki tries to dodge but is unable to completely. He is hit a bit, and his wound isn't healing as fast as it should. He starts panicking a bit, afraid that Ruri's hero powers are finally surfacing from inside of her. Ruri doesn't give him any time and decides to go in for another attack, which hits him right on the body and is so powerful that it disintegrates his entire body into dust. Al walks towards her and is happy to see that she's okay. He, however, is so tired that he ends up falling on her lap and sleeps for hours on end. He wakes up to find himself still in the forest, with a clear night sky visible above him. He gets embarrassed and quickly gets up, but Ruri tells him that it is completely fine and that she really liked it. Al tells her that he finally feels like he has recovered enough to walk on his own, and they both walk outside the forest towards the hotel where she will be staying, and he returns back to his house. 
The next day, he leaves his house to get some more fertilizer, as he ended up using all of it in his fight against the worm monsters. And after getting it, he gets accompanied by the descendant of the hero, Ruri herself, who is here to complete her promise of escorting him back to the royal capital as his guard. 